Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, bonjour à tout le monde. Bonjour à tous. Good morning. I want to begin uh, by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional unceded Algonquin Anishinaabeg territory. My name is David McGinty. I am the Member of Parliament for Ottawa South, and I have the privilege of being the MP for our regional airport. I'll be your host for this morning's proceedings. I'm so pleased to be here with my friend, my very good friend and colleague, Minister Omar Al-Gabra, who continues to be so incredibly supportive of our regional airport, and we thank him on behalf of all of the National Capital Region MPs, and for that matter, for the 1.6 million people who live in our catchment area, we thank him very much for his continuing efforts. He truly understands the importance of our airports, and I'm delighted to join him in making this important announcement this morning. So please join me in welcoming Minister Algabra to address us and say a few words. Minister Algabra. Good morning. Um, bonjour à tous. Thank you very much, uh, David. Um, thank you for that introduction. Thank you for your championship and advocacy on behalf of the airport and the community. Uh, I know Mark knows this. David never uh, lets me forget how important this airport is uh, to the community, and I'm really delighted to be standing here with him delivering another piece of good news for the airport. As you know, our airports uh, have been hit really hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. And despite the many challenges, airports have continued to provide essential air services for Canadians. I would like to take a moment to thank all of the airport employees who've worked so tirelessly throughout the past couple of years. You've helped keep Canada and Canadians moving safely and securely. Merci à vous tous. With the return of pre-pandemic passenger volumes across the country, investments in our airport infrastructure are more important than ever. In fact, they are crucial to maintaining safety, security, and the connectivity of travelers, workers, and communities. That's why I'm pleased to announce today that our government is investing close to $4 million in the Ottawa airport. Je suis heureux d'annoncer que notre gouvernement investit près de 4 million de dollars. The new funding will support the rehabilitation, or the new funding has supported the rehabilitation of the pavement of, on taxiways A, M, double A, double B, and double C. This investment will help ensure continued safe airport operations for passengers, airline crews, and airport workers. This funding is also in addition to the six point four million dollars announced last year for the construction of a light rail transit station at the airport and the five point six million dollars to help the airport maintain operations and essential air services for residents and workers in the national capital region and surrounding communities and as we continue with the return of aviation activity that supports the health safety and security of all Canadians it is imperative that we maintain a vibrant and competitive Canadian air sector. These critical investments will allow the Ottawa airport to invest in the infrastructure and tools needed to help reinvigorate the aviation industry and allow Canadians to feel safe and secure when they travel. And in closing, I want to reiterate my gratitude to Mark for his leadership. Um, as I stated, Mark, I know the last couple of years have been unprecedented and challenging, but your leadership, the team that you have, the, the board of directors have stepped up and, uh, and without having the, 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 the benefit of a playbook, found a way to help the airport navigate uh, this challenging and unusual period. And I also wanna thank you, Mark, for participating last week in the Air Summit that was uh, an important moment in the sector for us to come together, talk about lessons learned, to talk about the future, talk about what we need together as industry and government to improve 
the competitiveness, safety, and experience of travelers. So uh, I'm grateful to your leadership. Um, and I, with that, I, I, as, a, as a regular, by the way, uh, customer of the Ottawa airport, I'm here on average twice a week, but it's great to come back to make a positive announcement. So once again, thank you. David, back to you. Well, thank you, Minister, for sharing such great news. Um, as we just heard, the Ottawa McDonald Cartier International Airport is an important local economic engine for us, and um, the Minister's been there over the last several years to help whenever we reach out to be able to keep this important uh, economic engine moving forward. I think Mark may be, in, uh, may be addressing a few other developments recently, including some major private sector investments led by Porter Airlines. I'll leave that to him. J'aimerais dire qu'évidemment, l'aéroport international McDonald Cartier d'Ottawa est un moteur économique local très important. Nous allons de l'avant avec le retour sécuritaire des activités du secteur de l'aviation, autant au Canada qu'à l'étranger, et ce, d'une manière qui continue de favoriser la santé, la sécurité et la sûreté de tous les Canadiens. Il sera donc impératif de continuer à veiller à ce que le secteur aérien canadien reste dynamique et concurrentiel. So please join me in welcoming Marc Laroche, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Ottawa International Airport Authority to say a few words. Mac, this airport has come a million miles under your leadership over the last decade. Certainly a long way from the time when I used to work here as an immigration officer to put myself through law school. So here we go over to Mac. And Mac, we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Minister Algabra, MP McGuinty. Members of the media, welcome back to Ottawa. I can do this every week. If, uh, if the government brings a check of $4 million, we'll host this uh, thing every Monday morning. It's fun to get out on the runway and, and, and get the, uh, some fresh air. Merci de, nous, de vous joindre à nous ce matin afin de comprendre à quel point un élément vital du soutien du gouvernement fédéral a fait une différence à YOW pendant une période exceptionnellement difficile et complexe de notre histoire. Le financement pour le projet des infrastructures critiques aéroportuaires appuie notre programme de réfection de la chaussée des voies de circulation Alpha Alpha, Mike, Bravo Bravo et Charlie Charlie. We identified the need to rehabilitate the noted taxiways in the, in the authority's 2019 airfield pavement management system. Obviously, when the pandemic hit, we had to put all these projects on pause. We were uh, we submitted a, a proposal to government and they, they stepped up and they provided funding. So we were able to do this work uh, this fall in time for the, the demand, the peak season demand, make sure that all our infrastructure is ready for the Christmas rush. The taxiways were returned to service on October 21st after a well-organized and phased schedule that was followed to minimize the impact of the airport operations. Project work included the rehabilitation and reinstatement of the pavement of the taxiway. It also covered critical ancillary works such as the installation of taxiway shoulders, replacement of storm sewers infrastructure, the realignment of taxiways, improve uh, the compliance for code D and code E aircraft, and work on airfield ground lighting. Nous sommes allés de l'avant en sachant que près de 4 millions de dollars, soit la moitié du coût du projet, seraient financés par le gouvernement du Canada. Je ne peux pas compétitionner avec les annonces. <laughs> Le programme PICOP la fonde les fonds admissibles à 50 et j'ai donc été heureux de recevoir le montant maximum permis. 
Comme le ministre l'a mentionné, ce montant s'ajoute aux 6,4 millions de dollars qui ont aidé la réalisation de notre projet concernant la station de l'aéroport de trains légers et aux 5,6 millions de dollars du Fonds fédéral de soutien aux aéroports. Chaque dollar reçu avec gratitude est essentiel à la poursuite de la reprise. Minister, this funding also allowed the authority to move on other critical projects. By taking funds, receiving funds from the federal government, we were able to build Taxiway Romeo, which is uh, the one that Porter announced the construction of a hangar. This hangar will be receiving, can receive up to six aircraft for maintenance. It has, it's going to bring 200 full-time, well-paid jobs to the, to the airport. So there is a ripple effect by providing funding for the taxiway. It enabled us to go on with the taxiway Romeo, and we were able to secure a private investment. The holiday season is almost upon us. We have our beautiful decorations that we put out. Looking ahead for the warm weather charter schedule, I'm very pleased to see a lot of options for our passengers. While we're not yet pre-pandemic levels, we're about 75% and watching the terminal get busier each month at YOW. First and most important priority is always will be ensuring the safety of this growing number of passengers and all airport employees. This project aligns perfectly with our strategic direction to optimize operational performance, ensuring safe and secure operations, and keeps us true to that priority. Merci encore pour votre soutien et, vous êtes, et pour vous être rejoint à nous ce matin. Thank you again for your support and for joining us this morning. Merci. Thank you, Minister. Wow. Well, merci beaucoup, Monsieur Laroche. Uh, I'd li now like to turn it over to Valérie Glazer, who is the Director of Communications to the Minister, to Minister Algabra, who will moderate a question and answer session. Thank you, one and all, for joining us this morning. Valérie? Merci. So we'll start the question period with media. It's one question, one follow-up. On va maintenant commencer la période des questions avec les médias. C'est une question, une question de suivi. Do we have a first question? Hi, Taylor Blewett at the Ottawa Citizen. Uh, Mark, I think I heard you mention earlier that you secured all the federal funding uh, you requested for this project and more. Can you elaborate on that, provide us what was asked compared to what was received? And, and Minister, I'm, I'm hoping you can tell us about the thinking behind the level of investment at the Ottawa airport being highlighted today. Sorry, I'm, I'm hoping you can tell, tell us about the thinking behind the level of investment being highlighted here at the airport today. So yes, we received the maximum. Uh, the program is set up that eligible expenses, for example, this is a project that was around $8 million, so 50% of all eligible expenses have been authorized, and now we're in the process of building the government, which will repay us. So we'll be receiving $4 million, which is the maximum. So we received that project. We received the financing on the LRT the, in June, I think it was announced. So we received 50% of uh, the el eligible costs, approximately $6.4 million. And we received also uh, funding in, in another program to the tune of $5 million. So, uh, you know, as soon as the program was made available to airports, the airports, uh, YOW submitted and they were accepted. Each time we put in a program, we, we ask our our, our local MP, um, MP McGuinty, to, to make sure that we get our fair, fair share, and he does that. He advocates to the minister, and the minister approves the funding, and we get the, the funding at the end of the day. Um, thank you for the question. Um, look, the Ottawa airport is extremely important for the region. Um, not only uh, is it a large region, talking about two million people live in the area, but also it is our capital um, where um, it is critical to have connectivity for our economy, for convenience, for, for tourism. Um, and as I stated before, and I think all of you know this, that the last two years have been really difficult on the air sector. Um, so our government made a, a strategic decision to be there to support airports at a time when they lost significant revenue. Um, just the last year and a bit, um, the Ottawa airport in total received close to $16 million of, of investment. This is, as Mark has said, to help them maintain safe operations and also to help them um, find, use their own 
revenue or their own resources for other additional projects. So I, I'm proud, again, to stand here with uh, my colleague and friend, David McGinty, uh, providing support for the Ottawa Airport and uh, expressing our appreciation. I don't think we can say thank you enough to those who've been working during the last couple of years during this uh, unusual times. Thanks, and I think that leads well into my follow-up, actually. Um, I know at the municipal level here in Ottawa, there's been considerable appetite for more flight offerings at the airport here. Um, Mark, can you speak to any work the airport is doing on that front? And, Minister, is that something you're considering supporting at the federal level in any way? Okay. Uh, for, for assistance at the uh, other... Uh, orders of the government, the levels of government, we've, we've asked the city, uh, uh, one program that was received is the ACIP funding, air, air support for uh, development projects that occur on the site. And that was approved uh, in this summer, but now we have to submit projects, they're, they're approved one by one. And, and it's essentially a tax equivalent grant for uh, the increase in, uh, of tax. And so that will provide extra revenue streams in the long term, not immediately. The, the shorter term, uh, we've made a request for a, a NAIR improvement uh, fund, which would enable airports to use funds to try to incentivize airlines to offer more direct routes when, when they want to de-risk them. For example, when there's a new route that's announced, the airline takes a lot of risk because it doesn't know what the passenger volume. So. They, they ask for incentives to ensure that they are profitable at the end of the year. And more and more, that's becoming a practice uh, within the industry. So, so for that, we, we have to work as a region to, uh, to make these uh, funds available and to go after more uh, direct flights to new destinations. And there is some projects in the works, but for commercial reasons, I cannot elaborate on them. Thank you. The short answer to your question is yes. I would like to see more options for the residents of the Ottawa region, Ottawa and Gatineau region. Um, it was great to see, I want to applaud Porter for their announcement recently. It's great to see this new expansion of their services here. Um, um, I know that the airline sector in general is trying to recover from the COVID uh, 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 impact and I've certainly, um, and I know that all major airlines are reassessing their, uh, their flight schedules and their flight uh, routes. Um, I really would like to see more options for the people of Ottawa and the federal government will do whatever we can. And I can tell you that we're also working as a government on the decarbonization of the air sector, which will help as airlines consider growing uh, uh, their traffic we're looking to work with them on making sure that there's a way to reduce emissions. So I, I want to say that we're doing both. We can, we're looking for ways to grow um, um, the business and grow the options, but also find, help the industry cut emissions. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Minister al -Gabra. My name is Gabriel. I'm working for CBC. Uh, delays in processing complaints to the Canadian Transportation Agency are increasing. There are currently more than uh, uh, 8,000, uh, um, sorry, what, uh, 18,000 files waiting to be processed, and the waiting time is more than one year. What do you have to say this morning to the thousands of Canadians that are affected by uh, this situation? Thank you for that question. And, and again, because of the challenges that the sector has faced over the last couple of years, there have been a lot of unacceptable situations that passengers has had to deal with. Um, we have, as a government, put in place a, a, a passenger bill of right to protect the rights of passenger. So with the increased difficulties and challenges over the last couple of years, we've seen an unpredictable and an unprecedented volume of complaints. Um, the CTA is doing, the Canadian Transportation Agency is doing everything they can to manage this, um, this volume. I have met with the chair of the CTA to ensure, first of all, to understand how they're dealing with this extra volume, to stress the importance of dealing with them as, as efficiently and as quickly as possible, but also to understand how the government can offer more support so they can do their job. Um, as I said to the chair, and I'll say to all Canadians, the government is committed to 
providing the resources um, um, that is needed to help the CTA deal with this unprecedented volume, but I will acknowledge that this is a lot more than any of us had ever seen before um, as, a, as, a, as a byproduct of the situation that we went through, um, but we're committed to working with the CTA on expediting um, and managing that volume as quickly as possible. But what does your government can do more to resolve this uh, situation? Well, uh, just recently, we, a few months ago, we provided an additional $11 million to the CTA. Um, now we're looking at not only what other resources, but how, are, there, are there processes that we can streamline to make, it, to make it more efficient so it takes less time? That's what we're looking at. Uh, I am and the government is willing to fix or ad 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 adjust or reform some of these processes to make them faster and easier. Thank you. Thanks. Judy Trin with CTV National News. Uh, Minister El Galbra and also uh, Mr. LaRoche, I'd like to know uh, what was discussed. You mentioned that you had met with airlines, you met the CTA. What was discussed in terms of strategies that could be put in place to make sure that the travel chaos that occurred during the summer does not occur during uh, this holiday season? If you could provide some specifics that were discussed, please. Sure. Thanks, Judy, and you dropped your mask. Uh, we talked about a, a variety of things. Um, um, you're right, last summer we've seen things that were unacceptable to passengers, delays, cancellations, and frustrations, and luggage lost. Um, we put in place operation, and I, I, I do wanna thank airports and airlines and all those who work at them for coming together during that difficult time and working together to address operational issues from labor shortage, uh, from bottlenecks, there was a lot of things that took place. What we did last week is we wanted to look at the structural and the systemic issues that exist. Uh, and I'll give you a list of things that we talked about and we committed collectively to working on them together. First, modernize, modernizing the security screening process. Uh, w we are looking at ways to modernize how passengers are screened, how CATSA operates. Um, those are things that we're working on. Um, second, we are committed to looking at ways for airports um, to, um, to expand or have more tools so they can um, generate revenue, additional revenue, um, so they're, they'll have more flexibility in managing um, the demands, the, the financial pressures and the financial demands that they're dealing, that they're dealing with. Third, are there lessons learned from what we saw that will help us reform the passenger bill of rights. And I just briefly spoke about that. So we are now committed to working together with the industry on looking at ways to strengthen and improve the passenger bill of rights. So those are some of the, uh, uh, the measures that we talked about. And um, um, so there's a commitment from the government side, from the industry side to work on those particular and few others that I may have forgotten um, moving forward. Mr. LaRoche, do you have anything to add to that in regards to what Ottawa International is doing? Yes, the, the initiative of the airport summit, uh, I commend the minister, uh, it was the first time actually that we had since the pandemic, all the CEOs of the major airlines, airports, uh, CATSA, NAV Canada, they were all talking together. So it was the first time meet in the two and a half years. So we took stock of certain lessons learned, but we also uh, acknowledge some of the files that they were working on. For example, having more data, sharing our data, having more transparency on data. Uh, so when there is an issue that we can, we, we have evidence and, and we can find solutions very rapidly. We looked at also digitization uh, of uh, uh, airports, for example, a project that's being done in Vancouver. So those things are, are, are medium, short term and long term policy decisions. So we're looking at the short term uh, and uh, the minister was able to get uh, from, from the CEOs of the airlines, are we ready for Christmas? Most they acknowledged yes, but we're still an industry that is fragile. We, we've come out of shock, so we are ready, but you know, there's a one snowstorm event and, and things could slow down very quickly, uh, as typically. So <clears throat> those are all discussions that we had in, 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 in closed doors. 
My follow-up question, Minister Algabra, is uh, we know that in regards to the travel chaos, uh, it was also the passport issue that contributed to some of that. Do you have a sense of the total number of Canadians who were unable to continue with their travel plans because of a delay in transport, uh, uh, getting their passport, and whether or not that issue, that accountability, should also be included in the Passenger Bill of Rights as something that the government needs to perhaps compensate for? So look, it's really, um, a short answer, I don't know the numbers, uh, but it's really important to take stock in what had happened last summer. Um, we, in, in, in a short span of four months, from um, public health measures that restricted travel, public uh, reluctance to travel because of COVID and Omicron, to a 300% increase in traffic with an after a significant um, labor shortage, layoffs that took place, we saw an imbalance between demand and supply. And we didn't just see it in Canada, we saw it around the world. So these challenges were, I'm not making excuses by the way, I'm stating facts to explain how we got to where, where we were uh, last summer whether it was with airports or airlines or passports or, or ordering a, a dishwasher or a fridge or buying a car, we've seen significant delays in availability of products and services um, and, 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 and not to mention supply chain challenges. Our government stepped up. We worked, uh, and let me focus on the air sector, we worked hand in hand with the sector on addressing operational issues and we saw how quickly things turned around. I won't deny that there were very frustrating moments and episodes um, that was frustrating for passengers, that was frustrating for airlines, that was frustrating for our government. And there are a lot of lessons learned. So what we're doing, and as I, I stated earlier, we are looking at how we can strengthen the passenger bill of rights, including uh, standards for CATSA, standing for sta standards for gov other government agencies. Those are the type of things we're looking at because it's really important that we keep in mind the focus of the passenger experience. That's ultimately what we're all trying to do. Are you looking at standards for passports, renewing passports? Like what have you set in terms there, of this there new are timeline? So, I mean, you're asking are me you, questions right. about outside of my department, but there are standards for passports. And I know Minister Gould has put in place uh, processes and procedures that has dealt with a lot of issues that we faced at the time where there was a surge of demand. Today, I, my sense is that the time it takes for a passport is back to close, if not close to normal, if not normal, close to normal. Uh, and that's a testament to Minister Gould's leadership and the, the, uh, our officials at Service Canada. Uh, but we do have a standard for passport delivery. Hi, bonjour. Uh, Louis Charles Poulain, TVA Gatineau, Ottawa. My first question is for uh, Mr. Algabra. Uh, as Minister of Tran Transportation, do you have any news about the federal funding asked by the Gatineau City for the tram tramway project between uh, Gatineau and Ottawa? Um, these projects uh, tend to go through the infrastructure department with Minister LeBlanc. Um, um, so I don't have the latest update. I don't even know where, where the application is at at the moment, so I don't have an update for you. Do you know if the federal is going to inject money on, in this project? I, I really don't have an update for you, so I don't know where the application is at. Thank you. Uh, second question uh, for uh, Monsieur Laroche. Euh, concernant l'achalandage, vous avez parlé de 75 Est-ce que vous avez des, euh, des, des projections qui nous disent quand est-ce qu'on va revenir au même niveau euh, que la pandémie Puis quel impact ça a présentement sur euh, l'aéroport on, on pense, on va être financièrement euh, au point neutre probablement au cours de l'été. Euh, on, on espère être à 80 à la fin de l'année euh, 2023. Euh, L'impact, c'est en fin de compte, c'est on a moins de passagers, euh, donc on a moins de revenus. Euh, un aéroport, c'est financé à 100 % par les revenus que nous, euh, nous, nous avons euh, des avions et des passagers. Donc, ça rend notre tâche un peu plus difficile, mais euh, le, le pire est passé. 
fait que d'ici euh, 2024, on devrait être euh, rendu dans le même degré d'achalandage qu'en 2019. Et je pense qu'avec l'annonce de Porter, on est en bonne voie d'être très optimiste pour l'avenir, pour le dépasser euh, de, de, de façon rapide euh, une fois euh, les services de, de Porter augmentés ici. Merci. Merci. Thank you, merci. I will pass it on to MP McGinty for closing remarks. Well, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us here today. And um, don't forget to um, buy your plane ticket and use this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful airport. Take care. Have a great day. Merci beaucoup.